Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of David weekly Bible study where we learn it and then we live it and go out and share it to the world. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Anybody excited that tonight is Bible study time? Amen. Therefore, we can study the Word of God and be on one accord. Amen. Praise God. Today is the first day of Lent. It's Ash Wednesday as we are pressing our way toward Calvary. Amen. Amen. Everything that we are and everything that we hope to be, it began on Calvary. Amen. 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 So we give God the glory. Believe in my faith that God is going to walk with us every step of the way. And that this will be a season of repentance and reflection and restoration. Amen. Praise God. Tonight, tonight, tonight as we uh, start this journey, uh, the Spirit of God is uh, quickly get to Matthew uh, 14. Uh, but we're going to primarily be in Isaiah 55 on tonight. Quickly get to Matthew 14, but we're going to be in Isaiah uh, 55 on tonight. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let us pray. God, we say thank you. We give you glory. Give you honor, God. Give you praise, God. There's none like you. Look high, look low, God. Yet we found none greater than you. So we bow down, God, in submission to your wonderful and merciful grace. We understand, God, that your Lord, beside you, there are no others. And so we ask right now for you to come, God. Do what only you can. Liberate somebody in this season, God. Release joy in somebody in this season, God, that you might get the glory. We love you, honor, and adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And so uh, as we start the Lenten season, uh, let me just uh, help somebody. Uh, you're not going to find Lent season in your Bible. It's not in your Bible. It is a religious, uh, symbolic uh, activity. Amen. Uh, give you uh, just a little uh, lesson on it. Uh, it started out in AD 325. Uh, the Pope at that time, he thought that new converts ought to go through a period of repentance for 40 days so that they could get baptized on Easter to reflect that they are now living a new life. Amen. And so at first it was just for the new believers, the new converts. And so they could get baptized on Easter Sunday. But then around about 625, uh, Pope Gregory said, no, it's good for the whole entire church in order to go to a season of repentance and reflection so that they may start on Easter Sunday a new walk or a renewed walk. And so that is the religious background of Lent. So uh, if it allows for you to walk in a better way come Easter morning, then it was all good. You know, you got that type. That type is going to say, well, it's not in the Bible. And it's a Catholic thing. And y'all just following some kind of tradition. Well, if it's going to uh, result in me being a better Christian, a better man, a better leader, a better believer, then it's not in vain. Amen? Amen. And so over the next 40 days, it ought to be us getting close to God and realizing what all we have with God. It ought to be us getting to a point that we are listening and being careful in what God is doing in this season. All right? And so turn your Bibles with me to Matthew. I know I said 14. Go to Matthew 4. And so I want you to understand at the conclusion of Matthew 3, uh, Jesus is baptized. He's baptized, and while he is baptized, the clouds roll back and they hear a loud voice, a voice of God. And the voice says that uh, this is my son whom I love with and I am well pleased. This is uh, the manifestation of all three entities of the Trinity being exhibited at the same time. Here you have the father, you have the son. And you have the Holy Ghost at the same time. This is my son 
in whom I love and I am well pleased. Whatever you do in this season, these next 40 days, I pray that you are doing things that make God happy that he loves you and make God well pleased with your walk. Let me say that again. I pray that you are doing things in these next 40 days that is going to make God happy that he loved you and pleased with your walk. Okay? Now notice Jesus is baptized. Jesus gets confirmation from his father. And then when you get to uh, Matthew 4, he is tested and tempted. Okay, let me translate that for somebody. Just because you walk with Jesus and walk with God, and just because you might be doing something well in their sight, does not mean you won't be tempted or you won't be tested. Get it out of your mind, get it out of your head, that just because you love God, just because he loves you, and just because you are well, he's well pleased with you, your life is going to be a bed of roses. You're going to be almost in bubble wrap. Can't nothing get to you. Can't nothing hurt you. Can't nothing harm you. No, it's not the case. Because when you read Matthew 4, right after he was baptized, and right after he get confirmation from God, he is tested and tempted. Now notice the enemy waited 40 days till he was at his weakest moment. And then the enemy tried to offer worldly solutions. Amen? When you are at your weakest moment, no matter what you might be doing in life, don't look for worldly solutions to satisfy you. You got to look for spiritual. Amen? Now the enemy tried Jesus, so the enemy sure enough going to try you and I. Amen? Amen? And many times, when you read the text, the key word in that 14, verse 1, the key word is led. He was led by the Spirit in order to be tested. Sometimes what you're going through ain't the work of the devil. I know many of y'all say, oh, the devil is busy in my life. No, sometimes God is active in your life. And he wants to put you in a position where you got to make a choice. Either I'm going to stay with God or I'm going to stay with the reality of my situation. Either I'm going to stay with God or I'm going to stay with the reality of my predicament. Yes, yes. Every now and then stuff going to happen in your life so that you can reveal whether or not you are walking by sight or walking by faith. Right. It's hard for me, but I'm still trusting God. Right, right. Hell hounds are all around me, but I'm still trusting God. When I look all around me, I got more enemies than I got friends, but I'm still trusting God. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not all well in my life. But I'm still trusting God. Amen. And so when you read Matthew 4, you go through a period of where Jesus is being tempted and he's being what? Tested. All right? All right. Now go to Isaiah 55. I believe God got a word for us in Isaiah 55. Amen. Amen. So now we know the background link. These next 40 days. Now we know how we should be in a mode of repentance and reflection. And renewal and restoration. Okay? Now we get to Isaiah 55. And if I had to title tonight, I would title tonight at the risk of being sued by uh, uh, Sprite for uh, copyright infringement, I would title it Obey Your Thirst. O obey Your Thirst. Alright? Obey Your Thirst. Now when you get to verse 1, it says, uh, come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. Now some text says, everyone who thirsts. Everyone is an inclusive word. It means all have the opportunity, but specifically all who what? Thirst. Amen. Your thirst for God in this season should be like no other. Over the next 40 days, your thirst for God, I'm going to say it again, should be like no other. Okay. It should almost be like the psalmist in Psalm 42 and 1. Turn your Bibles with me to Psalm 42 and 1. It's a, it's a, it's a most familiar passage. Psalm 42 and 1 says this. As the deer pants for streams of water, 
So my soul's pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet God? Where, where can you go and meet God? And, and the problem with too many of us is we believe we only can meet God in the sanctuary. But if truth be told, some of us have had our best experiences outside of the sanctuary. Some of us have had our best experience when we did not think or did not believe that God could show himself to be omnipresent. That means everywhere. He's not confined to the walls of a sanctuary. God can, even when you were in a valley, some of us met God. Uh, I found out, the psalmist declared, that even if I make my bed in the pit of hell, I found out God is right there. Yeah. And even if I climb to the top of the mountain, I found out he's there also. Yeah. So nowhere can I go and outreach the hands of God. God is everywhere. Yeah. Now it says, my, as the deer pants for streams of water, in the jungle a deer must have water. Because deer's need to be physically well to outrun all of the wild animals in the jungle. It's almost as if the deer has to have water in order to survive. That is what the psalmist is saying. I need God in order to survive. I can't live without God. I need God every step of my life. And so whatever you're doing in this Lenten season, make sure you are seeking God no matter what. I need God more than I need money. I need God more than I need food. I need God more than I need clothes. I need God more than I need people. I need God. Because if we first seek what? The kingdom. Then all that other stuff will be added. Don't run to that stuff and try to find God. You need to run to God and watch God lead. Because if you run to God, he's going to lead you to some stuff you didn't even know you need. And he's going to remove some stuff you thought. So it says, come everyone who is thirsty. Come to what? The waters. When you come and you thirsty, you got to come to the waters. Uh, the waters is not Fiji water. It, it, it's, not, it's not Arrowhead. It's, it's not Crystal Geyser. It's not Smart Water. It's not Avion. It's not your pool. It's not uh, the, the bath at, at Burke Woods. It, it's not Venice Beach. It's, it's not Hawaii. It's not. The waters is who? The waters is God. Turn your Bibles to Jeremiah 2 and 13. I can't let you go without proving uh, what I'm saying to you. Turn your Bibles to Jeremiah 2 and 13. Let me prove who, who, who is the waters, the living waters. Jeremiah 2 and 13 says what? You ought to be writing some of this down. Uh, uh, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me with the what? The spring of living water. And have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. He, he is the living water. There's nothing like, if you thirst, you got to get to the presence of God. If you're thirsty for him, you got to seek after him. If you're thirsty for him, it's not enough to just come to church in your little church clothes and clap. You got to seek God. And even, and you can be in church and not seeking God. You can be in church with your mind on everything else but God. You can be on church talking about polity, talking about robbers' rule of order. You can be in church looking at what somebody else got on and what somebody else don't got on. You can be in church looking at what somebody driving. You can be in church checking emails, checking Macy's sales. You got to see at the God, the living one. If you're thirsty. Now, if you ain't thirsty, but if you're thirsty, you got to see God. It says in the text. Come to the waters, translate that, come to God. And you who have no money, come by and eat. With, come by wine and milk without money and without cost. You don't need money in order to get what you need in the kingdom. You don't need dollars in order to get what you need in the kingdom. What you need in the kingdom is faith. 
Faith is a, is a believer's money. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Faith is a believer's money. Yeah. You, you, you don't need money because if you needed money, it would suggest you come to the kingdom some kind of way and you receive salvation. But when you need to go higher and get something else, now you got to provide for yourself. No. You, what's, what's free is not only salvation, but the abundance of the kingdom. That means when I come to God, I can come to God just like I am, and I can receive from God what money cannot buy. But even when I receive salvation, the abundance, I can receive also, and it won't require money, it will require faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. When I come to God just as I am, I got to believe that God is the living water that can supply what? All of my needs. Now notice it says you can come, you can buy, you can eat, you can buy wine and buy milk without money and without cost. It, 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 without money and without cost. Uh, wine is, 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 is a equivalent or symbolic of high-end stuff. Milk is equivalent of basic stuff. So you can come to the kingdom with enough faith if you're thirsty and seek after God and God can supply some of your high-end stuff and some of your flipping. You can come to God if you're thirsty and have enough faith. And you can get all of your needs met. And you can even get some of the desires of your heart. You can come to God if you're thirsty and you got enough faith. And you can get all your needs met. And you can get a little something, something extra on your side. You can come to God with enough faith. Even if you're thirsty and you can come with the expectation that God is not just going to keep you in the land of just enough. He might even elevate you to the land of more than enough. See, too many of us are okay with being in the land of not enough. We okay with being in the land of just enough. But I just believe that there are some that are connected to me and you rich to go to the land where there is flowing with milk and honey. You rich to go to the land that's more than enough. And, and when you understand more than enough, you understand it's not just the tangible. When you understand more than enough, you understand it's the tangible and the intent. I wish I was talking. You understand it's not just handbags. It's not just cars. It's not just, no, it's peace in the midnight hour. No, it's joy bells early in the morning. No, it's understanding when chaos is all around me. No, it's, you understand. He's not a God that's just going to give you uh, just a little something to eat. He's going to give you joy when you're in it. Yeah. Amen? Because yeah. you want to say he can supply all of my needs. Now it says, watch this. Uh, why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor on what does not satisfy? In other words, why be consumed with worldly stuff that can't supply your needs? Some of us are so busy chasing after the bag that we have forgot our real source. And so even if you get that little old bag, all you're doing is selling for crumb when God is trying to get you the whole cake. And you're going to get that little bag and you're going to be stressed out of your mind. You're going to get that bag and you're not going to even be able to enjoy it because when you go out somewhere, you're going to see you surrounding yourself with a bunch of takers and ain't nobody giving to you. But when you seek after God, you're going to satisfy your need. When he's supplying, he's not only going to supply, but he's going to surround you with the crew you need in order to enjoy what it is that he has brought before. Yes. Yes. He said, he said, but, but, but we, we so consumed with the bag. Right. We, we chase after the bag. Mm -hmm. uh, send me some information about the bag. Mm -hmm. You send some people information about the bag, and you send them a lit devotion. They're going to read about the bag. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're going to forget that lit devotion. But I'm here to tell you, if you seek after God, you'll find out that he'll take care of you. Amen? He says, now, he says, now, listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Uh, and, and some translation says, listen carefully. Uh, the satisfaction God promises eludes most of us because we don't listen carefully. All right, all right. 
We listen, but we don't hear. You know, when you come to church and the preacher say announcements and you sitting right here and then you leave there and say, I didn't hear him say that. You listen, but you're not hearing. Now, if you want to listen carefully, there's some dimensions of that. Okay. Amen? Amen? You got to be willing to give up some time. Yeah. Okay. I wish I was talking to some yeah, people. Yeah. Right? You, you, you got to be willing to uh, give some attention. Mm -hmm. And you got to make an effort. Yeah. Mm. Time, attention, yeah. and effort if you want to listen carefully. Yeah. Now, God said listen carefully. I didn't say it. God said it. Yeah. So you got to be willing to give up some time. You can't be trying to read the word, uh, watch Housewives of Atlanta, cook some tacos, and think you're going to get a revelation. I wish I was talking to the word. Y'all laughing, man. Y'all, you, you know what I mean? You can't be trying to, uh, you know what I mean, see what's on Facebook, look at a TikTok video, and try to meditate on what God is telling you in this season. You got to listen carefully. You got to give some time, some attention, and some effort. That means you got to put in some work. You can pray all you want. You can have eloquence. You can have all the prayer. Your prayer can be 90 minutes long. You just speaking in tongues and you just, you going in. But if you don't put in no effort, you're going to need knee pads and you're going to need something else. Because you're going to keep praying about the same stuff. Time, attention, and effort. Yeah. Then he says, if you listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Mm -hmm. Eat what is good. Eat what is good. Over the next 40 days, eat what is good. Mm -hmm. Eat, and I'm not talking about food, because I know some of y'all, some of y'all think you're making such a sacrifice because you give up Twinkies over the next 40 days. <laughs> you cuss like a sailor, but you gave up Twinkies. <laughs> You blaspheme, but I gave up Susie Q's. <laughs> you got to eat what is good. Now, eat what is good. Please don't be simplistic in your interpretation. It has nothing to do with uh, comida. That's, that's, that's been your food. Uh -huh. It has nothing to do with food. Uh -huh. Eat what is good is processing and ingesting the word of God. Yeah. Eat what is good is ingesting the word of God. No, I'll go further. Ingesting getting close to God because in the beginning was the word and the word. Listen carefully and get close to God. Amen? So so, so you can, hey, I know some of y'all, Pastor, I gave up sweets. But if that didn't lead you close to God, you need to start eating sweets. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And Pastor, I gave up meat. Let's see. If that don't lead you, you need to be eating what is what? Good. Now he says, if you listen carefully and you eat what is good, he's going to give you something. Yeah. And there, there it is. He, he's he's going to let your soul delight itself in abundance. Right. He's he going to let your soul delight in more than enough. Yeah. He, he's going to let your soul delight in abundance. Now, understand, if you listen carefully and if you eat what is good, he is saying, I am going to allow for your soul to delight in abundance. In other words, when you listen carefully and you eat what is good, what he placed before you, you are to partake of it with joy. Okay. Uh, 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 some of us can listen, some of us can eat what is good. But if we have stubborn attitude when he placed what he can before us, then we're not delighting. How can you delight in something you, 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 you so... How can you delight in something that looks like you got hit with hot nickels in your face? How can you delight in something if you suck in your teeth? How can you delight? That means when you listen carefully and you eat what is good, when he placed whatever he placed before you in this leading season, enjoy it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. Enjoy it. it. Bask in it. Delight in it. Yeah. Celebrate in it. Yeah. Don't begrudgingly say, well, I can't even partake of it. And I can't even be, even be happy in it. Because I don't know if it's going to run out. And I don't know if it's too good to be true. That ain't your job. 
He said, listen and eat what is good, and I'm going to let your soul delight in abundance. Amen? Amen. He, he says, he says, he says, now look, he says, now give ear and come to me. That some, some, some translations say incline. That means lean your ear. Lean your, some of us can hear at church, but we leave with a different interpretation. Let me talk it again. Some of us can hear the same story, but we have two different interpretations. And the reason we have two different ter interpretations, because one person is not inclined in their ear to hear. You got to lean into what God is saying in this season. Even when it don't say what you want it to say. You got to lean into what God is saying in this Lenten season, even if it ain't what you want to hear. Let me say it like this. In this Lenten season, God may be telling you no about some stuff. You got to lean in. He may be telling you not yet about some stuff. You got to lean in. He, he, he may be telling you that ain't it, but you got to lean in. Quit always wanting something to make your ears tingle. And lean into what God is saying. He said, give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I don't know about you. Don't raise your hand because church folk got a long memory. But, but there's some people that ought to be tired of just existing. All right, all right. You're just tired of existing. Yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's just a, a grudge. It's just a grudging life you're living. You just get up and you're not happy. And you go to bed and you're not happy. And throughout that day, you're not happy. You find no hobbies. You find nothing satisfying you. You find you just you, you you're just existing. But but there's some of us we want to live. Amen. We want to live. Yeah. And there's some of us we determined to live. Yeah. Amen. Because yeah. we came to church on Sunday and we we heard him when he said, "If it's loose, yeah. Amen. Woman, thou art loose. Yeah. That's a, that's an invitation for a woman in this house. Woman, thou art loose." Man, thou art loose. Loose, 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 live, loose, L L loose, live. Amen. He says, he says, I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promise to King David. I will turn your Bible because some of us need to know. He says, now if you give ear and come to me. And listen, I am going to give you the same blessing and prophecy I gave you, King David. All right. All right. Oh, somebody ought to, okay. ought to cry. Somebody ought to be shouting right now. If you come to me, yeah. amen, yeah. and you incline or lean your ear to me, uh -huh. and you listen, I'm going to give you the same promise, All right. All right. the same blessing yeah. I gave you, King David. All right, turn your Bibles with me to 2 Samuel chapter 7 so y'all can get the blessing and so y'all can know why you should be shouting and giving God the glory. 2 Samuel chapter 7, that is the chapter in which he gives the promises to King David. 2 Samuel chapter 7, so your Bibles may even say God's promise to David. Get down to verse 14. I want to start at verse 14. Here's what the word of God says. The word of God says, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And when he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod welded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But, 15, my love will never be taken away from him. That is the, if you come to God and you lean your ear into God and listen carefully, his love will be never taken from you. That ought to be enough right there for somebody to shout. See, you're going to prove to me tonight whether or not you only can give God the glory of our clothes, handbags, red bottoms, or shoes, or whether or not you're going to be able to give God the glory because he loves you. I'm, I'm talking to somebody tonight. And you're not shouting tonight for no call. You, in this living season, all you want is the love of God. Anybody want the love of God in this season of your life? 
anybody dying for the love of God for this season of your life? Because you understand if you got the love of God, you'll get everything you need. Because if he loved you, he's going to provide for you. If he loved you, he's going to take care of you. If he loved you, he's going to protect you. If he loved you, he's going to problem solve for you. If he loved you, he's going to give you providence. If he loved you, he's going to give you peace. Would y'all open up your mouth tonight if you love God and you seeking after God's love and give him the glory? He said, he said, my love will never. And, 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 and notice, never is a strong word coming from God. That means you can't even mess it up your own crazy self. You can't even mess it up yourself. He still will give you that love. That, that's why some of us should be shouting. Because we know what we have done and he still loves us. We know where we've been and he still loves us. We know what we did and he still loves us. Am I talking to anybody that doesn't want to do and what it means is that your haters can't even stop him from loving you. Your enemies can't even stop him from loving you. Your so-called friends can't even stop him from loving you. Your fake family can't even stop from loving you. Would y'all open up your mouth tonight? It'll never. It'll never. Touch yourself. It'll never. It'll never. All I got to do is come to him. And clean, and clean my ear to him and listen. And, and his love will never. He said, it'll never be taken away from me as I took it away from Saul. He took it away from Saul. Why? Wow. Because Saul stopped leaning his ear to the word. Ah, I know y'all don't want to hear that. It says, whom I removed from before you. He says, your house huh, and your kingdom will endure forever. And your throne will be established forever. If, if, if you incline your ear and listen carefully to God, your king going to reign forever. That means that if you incline your ears to God and if you listen carefully, it ain't even just for your generation. It's for your cup. It's for your grandchildren in them. It's, it's for your great grands in them. It's for your grand nieces and nephews in them. And I'm talking to anybody that, that, that's trying to do something this season that's generational. We've done enough for our generation. But am I talking to somebody that's trying to do something so that your children, children, and your children, 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 and your children, children, children can reign? And notice it says that they will reign forever. That means when you incline your ear and you listen carefully, you open up the door for them to not to struggle like you struggle. For them to not to go through some of the stuff you went through. See, I'm not just shouting and giving God the glory and trying to live a certain way so that the people behind me can just exist. I'm trying to live a certain way so that my grandchildren can be the kings and the queens that God has called them to be. Would y'all open up your mouth tonight and give God? Yes. Yes. Lord, that, that, that's why I'm inclined in my ear to God in this Lenten season because I'm trying to do it not just even for me. Yes. I'm trying to do it for everything and everybody connected. Yes. Yes. Oh, I can say something like that. Yes. And because I got a sold out mind, you might want to connect with me so that you can go up too. <laughs> because I got a sold out mind. You might not want to hate on me in this season. And you might want to pray for me and get connected to me. Because when I go up, if you're connected to me, you might go up also. He says, my faithful love promise. God's love is faithful, y'all. It's not like man's love that come and go. His love is faithful, y'all. He says, my faithful love promised to David. Now he says, now verse 4. See, hmm, he says, see, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you not know and nations you do not know will come running to you. Now, let's break that down. Come on, y'all can. It says, uh, I made him a witness to the people. In other words, I gave David a testimony to go tell somebody. And, and a testimony means you had to go through something. 
you ain't got no testimony and you ain't gonna do something. But I, I took David through something. Now, 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 see, look here. The key word is that it's through. The storm didn't kill David. The struggle didn't kill David. The fire didn't kill David. Being in the belly of the beast didn't kill David. Being in the lions didn't. And I told you, anybody that's got that testimony, you you gone through some stuff. Now you got a testimony. You 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 had some situations, and now you can open up your mouth and tell somebody how Lord will keep you in perfect peace as long as you keep your mind stayed on Him. You got sick in your body. Now you know He's a doctor in the sick room. He's the boss on a job. Would y'all open up your mouth? He said, he said, he said, he said, I made him a witness to the people. A commander and a ruler and a commander. That means I gave him a testimony to tell other people. And then people that did not even probably like him, I made them his stepping stone. I, I gave him authority over other people that probably didn't even want it to happen in his life. But because he inclined his ear to me and listened to me, I elevated him. And it says, watch this, nations. You, you about to be helped by people you don't even know. Your, your name right now is being spoken in rooms you haven't even walked in yet. People are setting up the place. And God is setting a table for you in the presence of your strangers and your enemies so that you can eat. He says, nations going to come. Nations. Nations. That, that's where the nest, y'all. Come on. I mean, it, the nations, I mean, I mean, a whole lot of people. That you about to get help that you don't even see coming. Stuff about to happen in your life that you don't even see coming. Amen. And when it happened, uh, don't get paralysis by analysis. When it happened, don't be stuck. Oh, I don't know what it is. I don't know what I deserve. Damn, this. Why did it God? You ought to say, God, I knew you would do it, God. And now I'm going to give you the glory, God. Thank you, God, for being faithful to your promise. Thank you, God, for being a prophetic God that will speak a blessing over my life. Thank you, God, for your provision that told me that you were getting ready to bless me, that told me to prepare for the new season you had for me. And so, God, because you brought it to pass, I just want to give you glory. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I just want to say from the rising of the sun to the very going down of the same, God, the one. God, you're worthy. He says, he says, because of the Lord your God, uh, the Holy One of Israel, he says, for he has endowed you with what? Splendor. He has endowed. He has given splendor. Not the worst, but his best. There's some people that love you, but they don't love you like that. Amen. They'll give you a hand it down, but they ain't going to give you nothing new. Yeah. Amen? They ain't going to call you over until you get the first pot of gumbo. They're going to give you something that left over their head in the freezer for a little bit. But he's going to give you his best. Yeah. Amen? Splendor. His best. You see why some of us can't be on the sideline expecting mediocre and selling for mediocre and getting excited for mediocre? Because we believe God has come yeah. and he might give us the best. You see why some of us can't shout when y'all give us just these little crumbs? Because we understand God trying to give us the whole German chocolate cake. He's trying to give us the whole pound cake. And I can't be excited because you're just trying to give me just a little something, something. But I know God is trying to give me. Yeah, yeah. He said the splendor. He said the splendor. He said he has endowed you. Now he says he has endowed you. I like that he. That means that don't go between. He didn't give it to the man to give to you. He didn't give it to the preacher. He, he, he said, I ain't you. I, I, I gave it to you. That means when you see it happening in your life, you ought not be confused who to give the glory to. When, when, when you see it manifested, oh, I'm feeling that. When you see it manifested in your life, don't give no preacher the glory. Give God the glory. Don't give no bishop the glory. Give God the glory. When you see stuff working in your life that you know only God can fix and only God can change, you ought to open up your mouth right where you are. And even if you can't speak, you ought to just give God a hand praise. God, I, I knew you would do it, God. I knew you were a rewarder of those who diligently seek after you, God. I knew, God, if I just remain faithful, you will show up after a while. And because I see your mighty hand moving in my life, I just want to stop right now, God, and say, Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. He, he, he said, he said, he said, now verse 6, look at it. He, he says, seek the Lord. Oh my God, that's what we struggle with. While he may be found and call on him while he is near. It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. If he's omnipresent, he can be found anywhere. If he's omnipresent, he can be found. Seek the Lord while he may be found. In other words, declare, I, for God I live and for God I die. Declare, I, I, I want to see God in his glory. Amen? Seek the Lord while he may be found. In other words, seek the Lord while you have a chance. And if you go to Jeremiah 29, go to Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah 29, 13, I'm, I'm going to get somebody a shot right here. I'm going to get somebody a shot right now. See, y'all only, y'all speak that Jeremiah 29 and 11. Y'all love saying that, but y'all never get to verse 12 and 13. Because if you got to verse 12 and 13, I declare, man, you will run around like you got some butter pecan ice cream. Y'all know Jeremiah 29, 11. For the plans I know I have for you, plans to prosper and be in good health. But you better get to verse 12. Because verse 12 says, then you will call on me and come and pray. When you know God has plans for you, you ought to call on him and pray. He said, call on me and pray and I will listen to you. Would you understand that God will listen to your prayers when you are going through something? Quit running to Instagram and run to God and believe that God will listen to your prayer. And he says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. In other words, don't run to God if you don't believe that he can do it. Don't run to God if you doubt whether or not he can do it. And then he says, I will be found by you. Seek me and I see. Y'all know God has plans for you, but you stop right there. But I believe because you came to Bible study tonight, you're going to call on him and you're going to pray to him and you're going to believe no, you're going to know he's going to listen to you and you understand that if you seek him, you, you will find him. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So, how, how, so how can you find it? By seeking it. Amen? Amen? Jeremiah 29, 12, 13, 14 ought to be wrote, written down on a sticky. It says right here, seek the Lord while he might be found. He can be found if you call on him and you pray to him and you seek after him, you can find him. So don't tell me you can't find God. I'm going to tell you, you can find God if you call on him and you pray to him, and you seek him, you can find God. Y'all remember the song, right? Call him up, tell him what you want. You better learn how to call God up and tell him what you want, and believe that God can hear your prayer. That's why you can't be a believer and have so much low self esteem. You can't be a believer and think that you so low down that God can't bring out. I don't care if you've been so down so long that getting up ain't even on your mind. You better understand right where you are. You can open up your mouth and you can find God. You can be in a convalescent home and find God. You can be in a hospital room and find God. You can be in a Paul found him in a jail cell. You can be in a jail cell and find God. Am I talking to anybody that has seek after God and you found God? Am I talking to anybody that was going through something and you didn't know how you were going to pay a bill and all of a sudden somebody that owed you some money called and they had conviction in their heart? Man, come pick, girl, come pick up this money. Am I talking to anybody that did not know how you were going to feed your... You better learn how to call on God. Call on God. Seek God. Cry out and pray to God and watch you find God. See, y'all stop at that Jeremiah 20. Y'all know that by heart. For I know the plans I have for you, the plans to prosper you and all. You better keep reading. And you better call. If you know he got plans for you, then call him. If you know he got plans for you, why you call everybody else but him? He didn't say they got plans for you. He said, I got plans for you. But you got to seek me in order for me to reveal the plans I got for you. That's why many of you walking around with blinders on your eyes because you don't know how to call him up and seek after him. But if you call him up and seek after him, he'll remove the blinders off your eyes so that you... He says, seek the Lord. 
Y'all got me happy. While he may be found, call on him while he is near. I mean, he near. He near. I, I, can we be real tonight? Sometimes some of us have been uh, so dis, disappointed in life. I'm talking to some real people tonight. Yeah. You've been so depressed about your situation. Mm -hmm. It felt like God was a million miles away. Mm -hmm. In fact, I believe that's where some lose the battle with depression. Mm -hmm. You feel like God is so far away. But the text says God is near. Yeah. He's near. Yeah. He's near. He's within arm reach. You just got to call him. Yeah. Pray to him. Yeah. And seek him and you're going to find him. Yeah. You're going to find him. That's what the text says. You're going to find it. It, it says, watch this. It says, uh, let the wicked forsake their ways mm -hmm. and the unrighteous their thoughts. Mm -hmm. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them yes, and to our God for he will freely pardon. Yes. That means anybody that is walking contrary to the will of God can make a choice during this living season, I'm going to get back to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, and, and, and I believe what's deeper in that text right there, that verse 8, verse 7, don't block them. If you're not going to help a person, don't hinder them. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Don't put all kind of hoops and loops when folks come to church. Just get out the way and let God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, I, I, he said, I will freely pardon them. Pardon means I will separate them from the punishment. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't gonna do it because y'all church folk. And y'all think because somebody do something wrong one time, they ought not ever be allowed to come back into church ever again. Mm -hmm. But you same believers shout about the Lord being your shepherd because you heard King David say that, not realizing King David should have been on cheaters because he was sleeping with a man's. But David can he can practice adultery because he wrote your little psalm. He can come to your church, but because I sin, I can't come. The devil is a lie. I can just get to God, and God can pardon me. And I know you don't understand it, but it's not true. It says in verse eight, "For my thoughts, there, there it is. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways." So I know y'all want to send me to hell, but that's y'all not God. I know y'all want to keep me out the kingdom, but y'all not God. Your thoughts are not his thoughts and your ways are not his ways. So stop trying to get in my blessing. Stop trying to get in my way and move out of the way and maybe when God elevate me, you might go. The text says, the text says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. When you look up to the sky, as far as you can look up, God's ways are that far away from yours. When you go out, when you go outside tomorrow, when it's, look up, and as far as you can look up, God's ways are even higher than that from yours. Yes. Amen. Yes. It says, uh, "And my thoughts than your thoughts, mm -hmm. and as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it." Without watering the earth. Can I, can I just add, this ain't no trick question. This, I promise you. Have, have any of you all ever seen rain come down and then go back up? No. If you have, come up here and preach this. <laughs> Let me get to my car and get up out of here. Anybody seen rain come down and go back up? No. The same drop. Go back up. No. Watch, let's keep reading. He says, without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. In other words, I open up the heavens and I send water so that the seeds can come forth. Amen? But no, seeds got to first be so that they can come up. Amen? No seeds, no harvest. Amen? But when you know you got seeds in the ground, you ought to begin to shout. Because you know rain can come from water to make something come up. See, when you know you got seeds in the ground, I know you may be going through a hard season, but you got to keep reminding yourself, I got seeds in the ground. 
When you're going through a difficult situation, don't let that situation consume you. You got to whisper to yourself, I got some seeds in the ground. When you know you are in the fire and it feels like you're in the storms of life, you got to whisper to yourself. I, and you can't wait till you get to church on Sunday morning. If you're going through hell on Monday, you got to remind yourself, I got seeds in the ground. If you're going through hell on a Tuesday, you got to say, I got seeds in the ground. If you're going through hell on a Friday, you got to say, I got seeds. In the ground. Yeah, yeah. He says, so is what? My word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me. Some of y'all's Bibles interpretation void. That means if I told you you can find me, if you come to me and pray to me and seek me, I cannot tell a lie. If I said it, I'm required to do it. If I said it, even if you don't see it, just believe it, that it can come up. Amen? He said, it will not return. That means, I mean, it's coming back. It's coming back with something. It says, but will accomplish what I desire. And achieve the purpose for which I sit in. He cannot speak a word and it fail. If God said it, it will accomplish what He said for it to do. That's enough for somebody right now to give God the glory. If He said it, if He said it, if He said no weapon formed against you shall prosper, that's enough for somebody to give God the glory. If He said, nothing is too hard for me. That's enough for somebody to give God the glory. If he said, what things shall we say about these things that God be for us? Who can be a, that's enough for somebody to give God the glory. If he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, that's enough for somebody to give God the glory. If he said, for love above all things, I pray that you prosper and be in good health even, that's enough for somebody to give God the glory. If he said his mercies are new each and every day, that's enough for somebody to give God. Watch this, verse 12. We can finish this tonight. Come on, y'all. He says, you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. If you understand what he's saying in this text, and you thirst after him and seek after him, you're going out in joy and be led forth in peace. You, you're going to have happiness. Yeah. Joy. This joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. And how do you think you make the Lord joyful? You make him joyful by inclining your ear, calling on him, praying, and seeking. Yeah. He said you will leave this season with joy and you will be led with peace. Yeah. There are three dimensions. Y'all should know this by now. There are three dimensions of peace. Yeah. Peace from God. Peace with God and the God of peace. The God of peace will lead you. The God of peace translates to me I am. And I am means whatever you need me to be, I am. So what's going before you is I am. If you need protection, I am. If you need a problem solved, I am. If you need providence, I am. If you need divinity, I am. If you need strength, I am. Whatever you need is going before you. And guess what? Goodness and mercy is behind you. So if God is going before you, goodness and mercy is behind you, you ain't. Texas, Texas, Texas. And be led in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into songs before you. You you gonna walk in the mountains gonna sing your song. The birds gonna chirp like you wanna hear them chirp. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and 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 all the trees of the field will clap their hands. See, I I, I got some flesh in me, and I believe those trees are people. Yeah. People gonna clap for you that don't even necessarily wanna clap for you, but they can't do nothing but clap for you because God got His hands on you. So I'm like that. I, I just they gonna clap for me because they gotta they gotta clap for me. He has inclined and convicted their hearts to clap for me. They may even do the slow clap, but I don't even really care. They can just slow clap as I walk by. They can slow clap 
as they see God elevate me, they can just slow clap. As they see our progress, they can slow clap. But you can't stop it. You can't stop me. You can't stop what he has for me and what he's doing for me. Amen? The text says, instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper. And instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. Instead of briars means instead of thorns. You're not going to have thorns on your roses. Your roses are going to be smooth. I said that. Smooth. That was nice, y'all. Y'all like that? Smooth. I like how I elongated that old smooth. <laughs> this will be for the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. So, so, so what he's saying right there, and I'm done, there's a partnership. There's a partnership. He has uniquely positioned us to partner with him so that his reputation of being God will reign forever. Right. He had, I'm going to say it again. Yeah. He has uniquely positioned us yeah. to partner with us mm -hmm. that his reputation may reign forever. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, pro the question you are leaving tonight is are you properly positioning yourself that the reputation of God the good reputation of God might reign forever. Or are you doing stuff that brings nothing but shame to his name? Amen? Amen. Are you doing that which make others declare, what must I do to be saved? Or are you doing stuff that say, who would serve a God like that? Amen? So tonight, 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 obey your thirst. If you thirsty, yeah, yeah, yeah. understand you got to run to the living water. Yeah, yeah. And I don't care how far it may seem. I don't care what you've done in life. I don't care what you're currently doing in life. Understand you can find him. Yeah, understand, I don't, I don't care how far it may appear that he is. We got the information tonight. If you call on him, yeah. if you pray to him, yeah. if you seek him, you will find him. Amen. 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 And when you find him, give him and him alone the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. That is it on tonight. Amen. First night. End season. I think we're ready, y'all. I pray. I pray you got something out of that on tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you felt something while I was talking to you, yes. and you feel like you want to be led uh, to the kingdom, you don't know if your name it will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, yes. I would love to offer you an opportunity to declare the night before man, mm -hmm. for God I live and for God I die. Yes. And so the first appeal is that of the kingdom. If you, if you never prayed the prayer of salvation, if you would just type hashtag salvation, I'll reach out to you myself in order to pray with you that you may start this journey of being a believer and a Christian that worship God in spirit and in truth. If you were feeling something while we were in this lesson and you know you have accepted God before, but you need a church home. You need a place that's going to remind you how to obey your thirst. I would love for you to be the next and the newest member here at the city of David. I won't make you jump through all kind of hoops and loops. All you have to do is type hashtag all in, mm -hmm. and you can be the next member at the city of David. Mm -hmm. I'm praying for 50 or so to join us this year. Right. I believe God can do it. That's just how my faith is. I believe God can do it. This word will not return back void. I believe we just got to plant seeds. Yeah. Amen. And if we plant seeds, we're going to get a harvest. Yeah. And so if you know I'm talking to you on tonight, and you feel like, God is leading you here. If you would just type hashtag all in. Amen. You could join our church on tonight. Amen. 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 Begin to just uh, type on the screen the names that you know that we should be praying for on tonight. Uh, There's so many on our list. Some ask why do you call out those names nightly or every time we are in service because I just believe in the power of prayer. Amen. I just believe what God can do. Amen. amen. 
And so tonight we're praying for the Robinson and the Stanley family tonight. Praying for the Wells family, the Walker family, Henderson family, Slater family, Gray family. Praying for Leon Campbell and Annette Allen. Praying for the Langford family, Troy and Morgan Nelson. Come on, pray church. Praying for the Posey family, the Citizen family. Praying for the Hall family, Sister Pat Lips. First Lady Sheila Ware, Elder Marcus, and Shiloh, and Cyrus, and Sister Daphne, Sister Michelle, Sister Deborah Young, and Cairo. Praying for Sister Erica Hall, Selah. Praying for Crystal Davis. Praying for Ronnie McClendon, Brother Derek, and Dr. Sharon Moore, Greg and Roxanne Martin, the Bennett family, Brother Damon Willis. Praying for the Rogers family, Gaines family, Benefield family, Rollerboro family. Praying for Brother Brett Bailey and Shante Ellis Bailey. Eureka Young, Pastor Ross Johnson, Sister Wendy Strong, praying for my father, David Fishdrill Sr., Bishop Young, and First Lady Dr. Brenda Young, Bishop Kirkland, and Dr. Dana Anderson Brown, praying for Sister Deborah Stringer, praying for the Peacock family, Sister Pamela Gibbs, Pastor Haynes, and Pastor Ships, Victoria Green, and Arlene Scott, and Paul Scott, Fania, CJ, Charday, J.R. Kalani, Cynthia Maxwell, Angel Maxwell, and Tanisha Maxwell, LaFrance and Rakeem. Uh, praying right now for uh, Mother Paulina Brooks, Brother Daryl May, Brother Reginald Alexander, Mama Vera Harper, Mrs. Betty Sims, Miss Pamela Sims, and Lola. Praying right now for Taisha Harvey and family, Kiasha Macklin and Shalane Johnson. Come on, pray, church. Carolyn Johnson Willis and Al Johnson, Ken Stanberry, Ray May, and Merced May. Praying for Mother Esther Daniels, Mother Ali Frazier, Sister Willa Dasher. Brother Andrew Ireland and Dr. Karen Ireland and Dr. Tamai Johnson and Sister Kenita Lewis and Isha Lewis and Brother Melvin Lewis, the mother of our church, Mother Alma Thomas, praying for right now. Walker Posey Jr., Don Posey, praying for the McCray family, Brother Richard Griffin, Brother Sammy Davis, praying for you, Mama Hattie Davis, Sister Wanda and Brother Allen and Raven and Kia and Herb and baby Jason, praying for Dave Robinson, Willie Allen. Uncle Gus Briscoe, Imani Hayes, Veronica Hayes, and Bootsy Briscoe, and Eloise Tenner. Praying for the Nichols family in Memphis. Praying for the Monterey families that suffered the tragedy. Praying for Turkey. Still had, had an earthquake yesterday, 6.4. You would think they have gone through enough, but God is able. Amen? Let us pray. God, we say thank you. We give you glory and honor and praise. We, we thank you on tonight, God, for sending your word. We thank you on tonight, God, for being all that we know you to be, God. You met us in this sanctuary tonight, God. And so we praise you and we honor you, God. And we declare there is none like you, God. And I pray right now, God, that you would convict our hearts, that we might seek after you, God. Whatever somebody is going through on tonight, God, I pray that you would convict their hearts, God, that they may cast that thing to you for you care, God. God, I'm praying right now that you keep us steadfast, seeking after you, steadfast calling on you, steadfast praying to you, steadfast believing in your word, God, that we can find you. Somebody in a dark place right now, reveal yourself, God. Somebody in a lonely place right now, reveal yourself, God. Somebody in a state of depression, right, a state of grief right now. Reveal yourself right now, God. Do what only you can, God. Separate us from the situation, God. Separate us from the obstacle. Separate us, God, from the predicament. And shift the paradigm right now on tonight, God. I thank you for what you're doing at the city of David, God. And how you are raising up a generation of believers, God, that's going to trust you no matter what, God. And I declare we lead tonight, God, believing that your word, it shall not return void. And it will accomplish the very thing that you desire, God. And so it's our prayer tonight is thy will. Whatever thy will is, let it rain here on earth. We love you, God, and we adore you. We magnify you. We exalt you, God. In the name of Jesus, we offer up this prayer. Amen, amen, and praise God. And so tonight, tonight, uh, continue uh, to uh, draw close to God in this Lenten season. Amen. It's a season of reflection and repentance, renewal and restoration. It's bigger than giving up twinkies. Amen. Let's seek God and watch us find God together that we might glorify God together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love y'all. Have a great week.